Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can create a dynamic title based on a slicer. So when you're working with pivot table data, often you use slices, and then you want to be able to reflect the choices made in the slicer in some kind of a title, let's say a graph title. And so let's start off with orientating you with the data we've got here. So it's just some safety information. Uh, I will be making this file available to you in the comments. So just have a look there if you wish to download and look at this yourself and you can just see it's some information with regards to some safety incidents that took place so all I've done is I've taken this table and I've used it to create a pivot table so if we look at our pivot table what I've done is I've plotted my plant on the columns my shift in the rows and the total of the incident cost in the values section and what I've also done is I've built a graph on this information now it's a bit of a messy graph at the moment because of course all the plants are being shown and I'd like to see this where I can select specific branches. So before I go any further I'm going to take this graph and I'm going to move it. I've already created a page ready to receive this graph called report and so if I click on this graph click on X to, to um, cut it, control X and go to the report page and I can control V and I can then move that graph where I want it to be. At this point under pivot chart analyze I can insert a slicer and I'm going to pop in a slicer by the plant. All right there we go all of my different plants. I'm going to change the slicer so with the slicer selected on the slicer menu I can increase the number of columns to three and there we go and so as I choose different plants so the graph will update and if I hold down control I can multi-select and see several plants. So at this point what I'd really like is a title above my chart that, that reflects the choices made in terms of the slicer. So I would like this to say the total incident cost for California, Illinois and Montana. That would be ideal. So how do we go about doing that? Let's go back to our pivot page and I'm going to take a copy of the existing pivot chart that's been created. I'm going to give them a few lines of space and let's pop that underneath. I'm going to make some modifications to this. So I'm going to take the plant and put it into the rows and I'm going to get rid of some of incident cost. As you can see I now have just the names of the plants in a column and next thing I'd like to do is under my design under grand totals. I'm going to turn that off for rows and columns. I don't need the grand total. So now you can see that I have a list here of the plants and because the fact that that slicer is can, was originally connected to the original pivot table, I've now created a new pivot table, this slicer is connected to both. And so if I go along and choose let's say Florida, Alabama, Iowa and Texas and I go back to the options shown in the pivot table below we can see that those different plants are being shown in the list. Alright so let's go along and see how we can go and build a dynamic title from this. Equals and I'm going to use the text join function. Text join. Text join function asks for a delimiter which is going to be a comma space. Then it says do you want to ignore empty? Now I should never have empties but I'm going to say true. Then it says, what is the text that you want to join up? And so I'm going to select this range here, starting at A17 and going down. And I'm going to give myself a couple of extra lines. Let's go to A35. And at this point, I'm going to close my brackets and press Enter. So it now says Alabama, Florida, Iowa, Texas. And all I need to do here is just to say total incident cost for space and then put the ampersand. Total incident cost for and text join. So at the moment it's looking pretty good and I can go to my report, I can go to my uh, design, I can say add a chart title above the chart and with that chart title selected in the formula bar I can say equals and click on the cell with the formula in it press enter and now as I choose different options we can see that it's updating and dynamically showing those values. All right, so that's great if I deselect or show everything now it's going to show every single plant 
which is getting quite long and clumsy. What would be great is to have the ability to say, well, look, if there are more than, say, five choices made here in terms of the different plants, then let's not show them all. Let's just say multiple plants. All right, so let's go back now to this graph here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use make use of the count A function. So if I go along and say equals count A and choose to select that range, the same range again to 35, count A, A17 to A35. What that's going to give me in this case is 9. And so what I can do is I can say, OK, if the number of plants returned is over 5, then do one thing. Otherwise, let's do something else. So let's go back in here and I'm going to say total incident cost 4 ampersand. And here I'm going to just put a, give myself a couple of extra lines. I'm going to say if that value, F17, is greater than 5, then multiple plants. Otherwise, it must do all of this. All right, so if we read the query now, it's or the, the formula, it says put in that literal wording total incident cost 4, the ampersand will join it on, and then we've got this conditional check to say if F17 is greater than 5, say multiple plants, otherwise write, put in this text join and concatenate or join these things together. So if we look at that, we can now see total incident cost for multiple plants. And if I go along and choose four plants, it goes along and says Alabama, California, Georgia, Montana. As soon as I go to the sixth, it now goes to multiple plants. All right, so that's great. However, if I wanted it to go along and say Alabama, Georgia, and Montana, and Montana, what I could do now is I could go along and essentially moderate or change that formula to ascertain or pick up the first several up to the, sec the last one and then put in an ampersand. All right, so I'm going to go along now and I'm going to use this count A function. At the moment, it's essentially giving us three because we've got three selected here. And so what I want to do is I want to say, Instead of text join A17 to A35, what I wanted to do is to say A17 to A18 and then put in the value in A19. All right, so I'm going to go along and I'm going to use a, a function in Excel called indirect. The indirect function allows me to reference a cell by putting in the string value. So in other words, instead of typing in the A17, you'll notice I'm wrapping this up in quote marks. And I want to say from A17 to A something. And effectively what I want to do is to say from A17 to A18. So I'm going to say to A. So I needed to say 17 plus 1. 17 plus 1 will give me 18. So I need to say 17 plus the value in F17 minus 2. All right, so of course, 3 minus 2 is going to give me the 1. So uh, we're going to say 17 plus 3 is going to be 20 minus 2 is going to be 18. All right, so with that in, in place, let's go along and close the final bracket there. Let's see what we get. And we can see it says total incident cost for Alabama, comma, Georgia. And so all I need to do now is I need to say ampersand, ampersand, and I'm going to say offset. Now the offset function allows me to just given a start point. So I'm going to start off with that value there, A17. I now need to go down a certain number of rows. So in this case, I need to go down two rows. And so I can go along and say use F17 again, minus one. And the number of columns I need to offset is zero because I want to stay in that same column. So I'm going to say zero. And height and width is going to be one comma one. Right? These are optional arguments. And if I now press enter, all right, we can see that that's joined up. Of course, I need to put in the little ampersand symbol. So I'm going to need to just say amp and quotes ampersand 
space close quotes ampersand now so just don't be confused that ampersand that is not inside a quote is to concatenate and then I'm adding in this literal and we need to just take that one bracket out of there and put it at the end here all right so pop that in there that looks better let's go along and just try different combinations now so if I just put in Alabama we still got a problem because now it's saying Alabama and Alabama I need to just put in one further check and I'm just going to put in a new line to say if f f17 is equal to one then just do a 17. All right that would just literally refer to the word Alabama otherwise let's do all this text join stuff all right so this now handles cases where there's just a single selection cases where there are multiple selections and cases where there are less than five that puts in the ampersand sign all right so let's go back to our report and it now works for Alabama it works for Illinois it works for Ohio let's go along and choose a couple it works when we pick several up to five and as soon as we go to the sixth it's going to say multiple plants and there we go all right so you can see how using the slicer joined to another table or another pivot table we can actually use this list of the store names to essentially create this dynamic title for our graph all right so let me know in the comments if you thought that that was a elegant solution thanks a lot take care bye now